I gotta say, reading this story really freaked me out. Because, because listen, when I see the overt anti-white stuff, I'm kind of like, yeah, yeah, I get it. You're woke. You don't like white people. But the rhetoric sometimes gets really, really scary, especially in a story like this from The Verge. Netflix horror series, Chambers, follows Get Out in exploring the terror of white people. The 10-episode series is part ghost story, part assimilation drama. In fact, from my understanding, it's just a cool kind of ghost story. I don't know. I don't read too much into it. Basically, the story from Chambers, uh, we'll read, we'll, we'll, we will read through the article, but I'll give you the quick, you know, I won't bear the lead. It's uh, uh, a woman of color, gets a heart transplant, and then slowly starts turning into a white woman. Like, the, she starts being taken over by the woman who gave her the heart. Now, The Verge would have you believe that the horror is that she's becoming white. Assimilation. And that, you know, I, I, I gotta say, like, the way they framed it kind of freaked me out. This whole thing is weird. And it gets kind of... I don't know. It's weird to see certain subreddits claim to oppose hate, but then are just keep pushing these tropes about white people, right? It's not a good thing. Let's read the story. As the recent documentary Horror Noir lays out, most early American horror films featuring black characters play very different for black audiences and for white ones. Traditionally, in American horror stories, people of color have been associated with a monstrous, vengeful, often magical other that threatens white purity. What? Hold on. American Horror Stories, what? White purity, see, this is what they do. This is what's really weird. I understand there are some horror stories that use, like, forbidden, like, you know, Skeleton Key comes to mind, where it's like, there's an old couple, I'm not going to spoil the movie for you, even though it came out, like, a decade ago. Basically, they're, they're uh, voodoo witch doctors who are stealing people's bodies, and they were originally black, you know, hoodoo, I think it's called. And now they're in white bodies, and they can't convince the black people because they're actually scared of the superstition. So, sure, I don't think that's a threat to white purity, though. So this is what they do. Yes, I think it's fair to point out there are some stories that use other cultures as an other. Not all. But what they do is they're framing all of them and saying it's a threat to white purity. I don't know. Maybe maybe it's because I'm a daywalker, and I live in sometimes a, a white area, like a white community, and sometimes a not-white community. I don't understand what they're talking about. But this kind of stuff freaks me out. As POC creators have... Actually, hold on. I'm pretty sure this dude is uh, Noah Berlatsky who wrote this. He's white, isn't he? I could be wrong, right? Let's, let's, let's see if he's... Uh, uh, oh, there's no, um, there's no image. He's a freelance writer. I don't know who he is. Okay, whatever. He's a feminist. Maybe he is. Uh, if he is, then it is white supremacy for him to talk about this. It is, according to their own logic. As POC creators have entered the horror field to add new perspectives, though, innovative new narratives have flipped those tropes. In more recent stories, affluent white people are the sinister nightmare power that seeks to possess, corrupt, and control everyone else by stealing their bodies, <laughs> maybe their souls. Wow. Most famously, excuse me, that's the plot of Jordan Peele's, uh, Peele's hugely, success, hugely successful film, Get Out. The same broad description also covers Netflix's new 10-episode horror series, Chambers, which debuts uh, yesterday, actually. But while Chambers certainly owes a number of debts to Get Out's success, it isn't derivative. Instead, it shows how Peel has enabled other creators to rethink what the future of the horror genre could, genre could look like, which people are considered terrifying, and how real social dynamics can add more resonance to speculative horror. Here we go. Chambers is set in Arizona near a Diné reserva uh, reservation. And many of the main characters are indigenous people. The protagonist, Sha Sasha Yazzie, is a high school student who lives with their uncle. Fish store owner, Big Frank Yazzie. Uh, oh, that's her uncle. As the series opens, Sasha suffers a devastating freak heart attack while trying to lose her virginity with her sweet boyfriend, TJ. She receives an emergency heart transplant from a rich white girl named Becky, who died in an accident the same night. <gasps> Becky isn't as dead as she should be, though. Sasha winds up remembering things the other girl did and having visions of things Becky saw. Eventually, she even finds herself growing blonde hair and watching her hand turn pale. Haunted by Becky's ghost, Sasha starts to investigate the girl's death, becoming more and more and more and involved, what? More and more involved with Becky's life and more estranged from her own. I'd like to point something out. These people like Noah kind of freaked me out because we don't need this narrative. We don't. If it's true, that's the perspective they're trying to get across. Let them get it across. You don't need to beat people over the head with it. But what's more terrifying 
It's how every single thing to these people is some kind of symbol of white supremacy. Sometimes it's not. Let me point something out. By, of course, it's entirely possible the people who wrote this story did it in such a way to, to talk about assimilation. I'm not going to say it's not true. I just kind of think you're really, really digging into it. Of course, I didn't see it. Maybe it's in the show. But here's the thing. Why do they have an indigenous, an, an indigenous main character and then a white ghost character? If you want to show the dramatic body changes, then it's easier to contrast someone who is white versus non-white. So if you want to make a story, it's actually a really cool concept. I'm, I'm actually really fascinated. I might watch the show because I don't trust these people at all. And I don't want them to ruin this. I'll give it a shot. The way I kind of see it, it's a cool story about someone getting a transplant and then becoming the person they got the transplant from. What? So if you had two blonde women and they did a heart transplant, what do you show? Her just like slowly changing a little bit? You can do more physical contrast with someone who's white versus non-white. And it's really interesting. It actually adds to that, to that dynamic. She looks at her hand and shows it becoming pale. They say, watching it turn pale. Okay. Well, if it was another indigenous woman, her hand wouldn't change any colors at all, right? It wouldn't, it wouldn't change it from pale to, to darker. You can actually, you, you can't really convey the horror of that with someone of the same race. I don't think it's a racial issue. Um, I haven't seen the show. Maybe they did because that's, that's not in the trailer. Maybe they're right. But at, at, at the very least, the point I would like to make is, if that is the case, they're trying to make a, 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 a statement about assimilation, we don't need the, the gender studies professor to, to break it down for us and beat the audience over the head. Let them experience it and see that perspective. But the way they frame it's also nightmarish. The terror of white people. Is that really what the show is about? Because they wrote this before the show came out, so maybe this dude saw it. But also, it's not the terror of white people. It's just a reference to people becoming part of different cultures. Like, that's a weird framing, you dude. Like, it's really weird you're doing that. Here's what they say. In Get Out, white people plot to steal and subsume black people's bodies in a clear metaphor for slavery and exploitation. I've never seen Get Out. Chambers approaches similar issues from a different direction. The story isn't about slavery, it's about assimilation. Sasha is worried that her new heart is turning into a white person. Is she really? She experiences a double consciousness as the other girl enters her world. It's a frightening, frightening experience because losing herself is ugly and painful, but it's also scary because to her, white people are the unknowable other, a different culture and a way of being, uh, being than her own. White people are the unknowable other. One of the things that I really, really don't like about the intersectionals is that they view the world through a lens in which people can't come together. Naturally, as I mentioned, being a day walker, I can't understand that. And maybe that's it. Maybe this dude Noah is so racist, and he's the kind of person who would say he was racist, they'll recognize their own racism, that he truly can't understand that other people can come together, that interracial relationships exist, that people mix their cultures together. Some people just don't care. It is true that people uh, um, gather around their own communities, and it's been a big problem for immigration in places like Europe. One of the things that I learned in Sweden was that when people emigrate to Sweden, they choose to be in their own community and then create sub sub uh, uh, governments, essentially. Like uh, there was an area that was predominantly Somali migrants and they were kind of separate from the Swedish government in a sense because they didn't recognize each other. And so what Sweden is trying to do is put people, now they're trying to place people when they come. So that's true. Um, people do often do this. But it's weird to see this kind of person explain their perspective coming from a world where they can't recognize that not everyone is racist. <laughs> it's kind of a weird thing. Sasha deals with white people other than her ghost. She does. Wow. After her heart transplant, Becky's parents, Ben and Nancy, want to be part of her, part of the life of their uh, the girl their daughter saved. The Lefevs, Lefavs, Lefarves, uh, invite Sasha to dinner, then offer her a scholarship to Becky's expensive private school where every student is assigned a life coach and a laptop. Sasha thinks her new school is ridiculous. She nods in obvious disbelief as she's shown the school's meditation room, filled with napping rich kids de-stressing. She's also disturbed and disoriented by her insertion into an alien world. At the beginning of the show, when she's with her friends or family, she's carefree and bubbly, but being forced out of her comfort zone turns her into a drawn, angular, morose teen, thanks in part to sleepless, sleep, uh, whatever. Um... Okay. Sasha's losing herself also seems to like, like a clear reference to the history of Indi Indian boarding schools tasked with, quote, killing the Indian to save the man or the woman in this case. What is he talking about? History. Oh, you know what? 
I'm kind of over this narrative. Let's read the end. Sivan Alira rose as Sasha is mesmerizing. By turns, she is determined and vulnerable, terrified of herself and comfortable in her skin. The measured pace gives the show a, ch- uh, a chance to sketch in its supporting characters, situating Sasha in a network of relationships whose strength... This, oh God, I just can't read this stuff anymore. I don't, I don't know what world they live in, but I will point out, we are seeing the Jordan Peele type social thriller stories. I'm not really interested in those stories. I really don't care if anyone else is, by all means. Like, uh, Jordan, I think Jordan Peele is hilarious. Um, um, uh, uh, Jordan P, uh, Peele and uh, the other guy, uh, Keenan, no, 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 what's, uh, Key, Key and Peele, is that the show? I can't remember, it's been a while, but I think he's funny. And apparently the stuff they make is really great. So, you know, props, go for it. One thing I always want to say is like, if you want to make your social justice show and do your thing, I really have no problem. I'm just not going to watch it. I might watch this just because I think the story's cool about someone getting an organ transplant and then turning into the other person. That's, that's, that's like freaky, right? Like what if you had to get like a kidney transplant and then that person started taking you over and like stealing your body? It's freaky. It's like the body snatchers. But, <laughs> but the one thing I want to point out is I am freaked out by this how they're, they're like almost gloating in this weird interpretation of the world that views everyone so divided that they can't come together. That says like everything is a threat to white purity. It's just creepy. And it really makes me angry, these fringe wackaloons who just hate other people based on their race. Anyway, whatever. This is a dumb story. I don't even know I made a video about this. I got more videos coming up in a few minutes. I'll see you shortly.